I want to read an article to you. It is called Nine Ways to Break Generational Curses. It is by Larry Hooch. Hutch. You don't have to let sin and shame cripple you. These steps can help you discover freedom from your past. Number one, recognize the curse. In order to get set free and stay free, you have to admit you have a problem. That sounds simple. But we live in a day and age of denial. No matter what has happened to us in our lives, each of us are responsible for the choices and decisions we make. If you really want to be free, you will accept that responsibility. Number two, break the curse. As we apply God's word and power to our lives, and as we choose to walk in righteousness and obedience to God, the chains of bondage will be broken. There are three steps to breaking a generational curse. Number three, one, give your life to Jesus. The blood of Jesus removes our sin. Number two, fight the battle with spiritual weapons, such as the word of God in the armor of God. And number three, regain control over the power of your will. When Jesus shed his blood, he bought back our willpower. Through the blood of Jesus, we can say no. Number four, reverse the curse. There are three keys you can use to reverse the curse and live in victory. Number one, recognize your enemy. We battle not with flesh and blood. Our enemy is Satan and the battle is spiritual. Number two, forgive people who have hurt you. Number three, treat causes, not symptoms. For an example, insecurity, jealousy, or fear. Number five, release the power of love. To become people who lives are transformed, hmm, to become people whose lives are transformed by the love of God, we must not only get rid of what holds us captive, captive and keeps us in bondage, but we must also be filled with love for God, for self, and for others. Unconditional love will release blessing to know more of the love of God in your life. Love those who have hurt you, those who have opposed you, and those who have sinned against you. Number six, develop a godly attitude. A good attitude does not make everything go perfectly all the time. Matthew 5 and 45 tells us that God sends the rain on the just and the unjust, but our attitude determines whether the rain will water the seeds of our harvest or wash those seeds away. Get serious about where you are going with God, but getting your attitude lined up with his word, having faith and trusting in him. Number seven, Align your words with God's words. Your words give evidence of your faith and they should reflect God's good purposes for you. Exchange your negative words for positive words. Exchange your negative thoughts for positive thoughts 
and exchange your negative actions for positive actions. Number eight, accept God's acceptance. Jesus didn't come to condemn us or punish us. He came to give us hope that our lives really can be different. We don't have to live under the burdens of pain, hurt, shame, or sorrow. All the power in heaven is available to you to set you free from every chain that binds you. Corey Tan Boom said, There is no pit so deep that God's love is not deeper still. Number nine, walk in obedience. In order to break free from the curses and walk in freedom, you must learn to walk in obedience to God's ways. We don't have to be perfect or without mistakes, but our hearts need to be surrendered and pliable toward God. We need to be moving forward in the things of God every day of our lives. Today's decisions determine our tomorrows. There is a miracle on the other side of your obedience. So let me stop right here. I believe this is the end. This article is The Nine Ways to Break Generational Curses. God bless.